Hello everyone. So today we'll be discussing uh, a topic in programming, or I guess a genre of tools in programming that just help with uh, the productivity of programmers in general. And that is called version control. So to visualize what version control is, we must first uh, visualize the problems that version control tries to solve. So imagine that you're working on a large scale project. So the problem with this is that how would you manage like different versions of the project or different groups of changes that you make to the project? So as you're developing it, you can imagine as you're adding on parts of the project, you might find that uh, you know some parts become bugged when they work with other parts, which uh, comes with the necessity of possibly reverting some changes. And after you're done with the project, uh, maybe you're creating different versions of the project, version one, version two, then uh, are you supposed to like make an entire different copy of the code for each version or what? So that is one of the problems that version control seeks to solve. And then imagine that you're working on a project with a friend or with uh, some collaborators. So how are you supposed to coordinate your changes then? Because you know during the span of a single day, uh, you might make a set of changes and your friend might make um, a different set of changes and sometimes those changes could even like have conflicts with each other. You might both try to uh, change the same thing. So are you supposed to use some sort of live uh, collaboration tool like Google Docs or are you supposed to like, I don't know, email your changes to each other uh, by the end of the day, by the end of, by the end of each day or something similar. So you can imagine that without some sort of tool to regulate this, uh, whatever solutions that you try to come up with will probably be a bit complicated. And if you try to come up with such a solution, it would be a solution related to this version control. And then uh, just imagine the problems you would face with like two or three people working on the same project. And then just imagine how companies have to deal with I don't know, thousands of people working on the same project, each contributing to a different part of it, then there becomes a point where you can't just have each person uh, email the code to each every other person and take turns doing changes, I don't know what. So we'll need some kind of tool to uh, regulate this. So talking about version control, the most popular a uh, version control tool, which is the one we'll be talking about today, is something called Git. And uh, I'm not sure what Git stands for. I think it stands for several things, but it uh, was created by a programmer named, named Linus Torvalds, who is uh, best known for creating the Linux kernel. So if you, if your computer runs uh, Linux or a version of Linux or an operating system that has been influenced by Linux, uh, Linus Torvalds has probably uh, benefited your machine in some way. And this is a tool that he originally created back in 2006, I think. And yeah, so to understand how Git work, Git works in a really simple way uh, at its core. So first of all, uh, you can imagine that, you know, as you're working, you make a bunch of changes. So these are like the changes that you make uh, in the process of development or in the process of updating your code. Now, once you're satisfied with this group of changes, you know maybe you want to group relevant uh, parts of changes in your code together. Maybe like today, if you're working on an application, for example, if, you're, if today you're planning to update the front end of the project, then you maybe want to keep that group of changes together so as to like, so make it easier to refer to, easier to revert without changing other things. So yeah, so that is called the staging environment, I believe. So staging. So as you're uh, changing these things, you're supposed to stage them uh, together. And once you've got a decent you know, group of changes together, then that moves to committing. So once you're committing your changes, you're essentially, uh, I guess, just logging your changes in the git log so they can be referred to in the future and modified and viewed 
uh, as you please. And how Git works is basically it tracks uh, individual changes uh, in each file. Uh, let's just see how it works in action. So let's just go to an example folder that I've set up. And you're supposed to create a new uh, git re repository with the command git init. So uh, obviously you have to have git installed or else it won't work and it will just not recognize the command. But anyways, so let's just add a throwaway file to uh, edit. So a.txt, so this file has not previously existed before, but let's just make some changes to it. And then, uh, so as of now, this file is untracked, and we'll talk about what that means in a future video, but we add these files uh, to the stage, so we stage these changes. So right now, we've made these changes, and since it's untracked, Git isn't like actively tracking this file yet, but we'll uh, stage this file's changes with git add. So git add, and then uh, a list of file names. And then to add everything, you can use the wildcard symbol, or I believe you can also use all, uh, but I'm not sure. As you can see, there's no output, but behind the scenes, uh, git has added um, this file to the stage of changes that has been made. And if you're wondering where uh, Git operates, so if you use ls, uh, which is the which is a command to list all the files in the current directory, you can see that, okay, there's a.txt, but if you do ls, so all the files, including hidden files, you can see that there's a directory called .git, which you can like cd into and check out, but there's there's just a bunch of states and changes and information that you know Git essentially keeps about this particular directory. And it's probably like all compressed in a way that it's not very easy to read, but it uh, change all the changes are just uh, recorded there in all the history. So we can check the status of the current like stage of changes in the current Git repository with Git status. And you can see that you know it has recorded this change. There's a new file that has been created, a.txt, a.txt. And finally, you can commit this change with uh, git commit. Now, uh, you, you do need a, a message that it will be associated with this commit. So you can do this directly through the command line with the m flag, and you can attach a message like, for example, create a.txt. All right, so now as you can see, um, it has successfully committed uh, the changes that were staged. Now there was only one change that was staged and that was the creation of a.txt, but you know, this was committed. And you can change the, you can, you can see the history of past commits with git log, with the git log command. And you can see, uh, uh, at this particular time, we have made this commit, and this is the SHA1, the hash uh, associated with this commit. And you can see like a brief rundown of what happened in this commit. And yeah, so Git is actually quite a powerful and simple and lightweight tool that you can use to manage versions and changes that you make to your project. Hope you learned something today. Goodbye.